So uh, welcome to another session on uh, computing software laboratory. Now in this particular session, uh, we will learn about how to use the simulink model uh, for the development of different system. Uh, now to do that, uh, initially uh, we have to open a simulink model, a blank model like this as well as a simulink library. So I have kept these two side by side for the benefit of understanding. And here you can see that uh, there are lots of operations available under the simulink. Uh, we find different customized block sets like for aerospace engineering, for communication, for computer vision, for control system, for DSP, for embedded system, for fuzzy logic, for neural network and so on. Now this course being a very fundamental one, I would like to confine my discussion in a very fundamental level which should be understood by the students from different background. Now here uh, using Simulink what we can do is we can visualize the performance of different system just by invoking the blocks which is already existing inside this library. So if I just consider uh, the Simulink model here we find the different attributes like continuous, discrete, discontinuities, mathematical operations, signal routing, sinks, source and so on. Now to start with let us consider how we can visualize the sinusoidal signal in this particular platform. Now as you understand the sinusoidal signal uh, is a kind of source so we have to click on the source and there we find different types of signals in the form of sine wave, we have step signal, we have uh, the random numbers, the ramp signal, pulse waveforms. So there are different types of signal waveforms available to us. Now let's consider the sine wave. For example, we need to right click on it and add to untitled. So uh, this particular block has come over here. And if we uh, double click on it, uh, then we can also change the attributes. As you know, for a sinusoidal signal, the output is given by OT, which is equal to amplitude multiplied with sine within bracket frequency into T plus phase plus some bias. So conventionally, we call it like A sine omega T plus phi plus some bias value. So accordingly, you can have a control over the amplitude, you can have a control over the bias, the frequency, the phase and the sampling time. Now, uh, let us consider the amplitude to be 5 and let's have a frequency of say 1 rad per second. So frequency is specified in rad per second and let us keep the uh, other values as it is. And let's apply this one. Okay. And then I would like to observe this signal using some sync. So once again we do have different types of syncs like display, we have scope, uh, we can also export this value to the workspace. So let's take this scope for example, right click on it, act to untitle. And we need to connect these two together. Now once this is done, and then you have to save this particular file. So let me consider this to be experiment number three. So let me save it. So once it is saved, uh, then we have to go for running this one and once the run is over, uh, then what you can see is uh, you can double click on scope and you can observe the corresponding sinusoidal signal just like this. Okay. Now this particular signal uh, has been drawn for a fixed frequency that is 1 rad per second. Uh, you can also have uh, another sinusoidal signal for example. So once again let me go back to the source, add another sine wave. 
and uh, let's consider another scope you can also uh, copy this one from here itself like this and you can connect together like this and uh, you can also specify the attributes for the second sine wave so i have changed the frequency from 1 rad per second to 2 rad per second and once this is over saved and if you run you'll see that this one is the previous waveform obtained with 1 rad per second and the second one with 2 rad per second so it's quite obvious uh, from the two waveforms itself that the second waveform is having double frequency with respect to the first one so we are observing over a time span of 10 so accordingly uh, we have got these two waveforms okay so now uh, let me do some other operations with it so for the time being let me just uh, erase those scopes and let's do one thing uh, let's go to the mathematical operations and uh, let's use this adder block for example so here we are using an adder block which will accept two inputs and one output will be produced suppose uh, these two inputs are nothing but the inputs obtained from the two sinusoidal signal like this it's not connected properly So if it is not connected properly, then obviously you will find that this uh, red sign will be there and accordingly you have to connect it properly. So now it is connected properly. You can also drag it like this. And then uh, the output you would like to observe through a sync. Once again, go back to the scope. You can add this one. Once this is over, go and run and you will observe the waveform looks something like that because you are adding two signal and accordingly you have a fluctuation like this. Now here you find uh, because of, now once again if I just go back to this scope, okay, let me just uh, add it or let me just keep it over here. This time it is blank and let's now connect it over here. Now what you can also do in this adder block, you can also implement the subtraction operation just like this. Like plus and minus, if you put like this, then it will also subtract one waveform from the other. And now the waveform looks something like that. We can also find out the difference. For example, uh, let me have uh, two such uh, modules like so. Suppose this one is plus minus. So the first one is soul adder and the second one is a subtractor. So I'm connecting in this way. And let's take another scope to observe, to visualize the corresponding outputs resulting from the two scopes. So this one is one output. This one is other output. So scope one, I mean the second scope here, it corresponds to subtraction. And the first one corresponds to addition. Here you find both are plus. So these two sine waves are added together and accordingly I've got a waveform like this. However, for the second one, it's quite obvious that the waveform is different because the operation involved here is subtraction. So you can do different types of operations like subtraction, addition, multiplication, and so on and so forth. Now once again let me uh, go back to the previous uh, module once again and uh, let me just show you 
some other operations like uh, let me go back to math operations let me take absolute operation and you know what is done by this abs function or modulus function in order to visualize this thing uh, you have to take the help of a scope and accordingly we are connecting if you run so this is the output pattern so if you'd like to have the scopes for both input and output then what you can do is uh, you can have two separate scopes one for input other for the output so this is connected like this and this output is connected like this right you can also if you you can also change the naming scoping and here it is scope out so that uh, there is no such confusion now when it is over let me just have the fluctuation so this is for the scoping and this one is scope out so we can visualize side by side so now you can see so this is actual input signal a sinusoidal signal and here uh, we are getting the corresponding absolute value okay so let me just erase these two part and let me do some other things instead of using sine waves uh, let me consider some other waves so for that we have to go back to the source and let's take step signal for example we can have a step signal for example and uh, similarly we can also visualize a step signal using the scope like this now here you can also specify the step time and the initial value and the final value let me consider the step time to be say 5 initial value to be 0 and final value say let it be 10 and uh, if you run this uh, model uh, you can visualize the output so output looks something like that so from 0 to 5 the output is 0 and 5 to 10 the output is 1 so this is all about a step function now suppose uh, I would like to do one thing I would like to integrate that particular step function and I would like to observe uh, both the input as well as output so make it like scope in and uh, I require another scope to visualize the output so it is scope out and the output is obtained from the integrator itself so to do that let me go back to this continuous model and let's take integrator for example so I've got integrator in place connect it accordingly like so and uh, so these two connections are done properly you can also drag it like so so since it is over so now you can run and now you can see this is the input waveform this is the output waveform so you have integrator over here so obviously if you have integrator so it will integrate the step function and accordingly the output is obtained like this you have a ramp kind of waveform okay uh, you can also go for a differentiation operation instead of using an integrator so I can remove this block and accordingly I can uh, use this derivative in place like this and then if you run then it looks something like that so ultimately you have an impulse kind of function so scope in looks something like that scope out looks something like that so you have a step function at the input and accordingly the impulse function is generated 
So there are different such uh, blocks you can use for your particular application. And uh, this particular model of using Simulink for visualizing something, for generating something will help you in developing some complicated model without going into the detailed mathematical illustrations or without going into writing the codes for that particular system. Now uh, let me once again uh, consider the sinusoidal signal for example and uh, leads to another operation. So sinusoidal signal we have and uh, we can also specify the input frequency let it be say 2 rad per second and uh, let's do one thing uh, once again if i just go back to the mathematical operations you can find uh, this rounding function which is very useful whenever uh, we go from the analog to digital conversion this rounding function uh, is really very much helpful so uh, this is used here and let's take the sync like scope so this is for input and let's take another one you can also copy directly like this and you can specify the name like scope in and scope out so that you are not confused. So let's do the corrections over here anyway. Let it be like so. Yeah. You can also drag this one to a certain extent anyway. So it looks fine. So scope in is a sinusoidal signal as you can see and scope out is something like that. So here you are doing uh, the rounding operation. So obviously you can have two different possibilities either 0 or minus 1. If it is greater than 0 then ultimately it gets rounded up to 0 and if it is less than 0 then it gets rounded up to minus 1. Otherwise what you can do is you can also use a different types of operations. So for that uh, once again we need to go back to the mathematical operations and uh, uh, let me take for example this sine function. As you know the sine function generates two different values plus 1 or minus 1. If the input is greater than 0 uh, then the output will be plus 1. If the input is less than 0 then the output will be minus 1. So this connection has not been done properly. So let me do the connections properly like so. Yes. So here we are using the sign of operation. And now if you simulate, so now you see here the scope out looks something like that. So if the input is positive within this range, the output will be plus 1 and if the input is negative, the output will be minus 1. So accordingly, some mathematical operations are being performed on the actual sine wave. Now uh, what I can do is uh, I can once again go back to the round function where it is yeah round function and let me put in its place and let me change the amplitude of the sine wave so previously it was 1 so now let's make it 5. Now let's make it 5 and then you understand what is the implication of increasing the amplitude of the sine wave. Because whenever you go for rounding then you have two options only either 0 or minus 1 or in some other cases either 0 or plus 1 depending upon the parameter settings. Now if the input waveform is limited to plus 1 and minus 1 then obviously 
after using this rounding operation, a rounding function, you can have only two possibilities, either 0 plus 1 or 0 minus 1. Now, if I increase the amplitude to be plus 5, and then if I run the same thing, now you can visualize the difference. So hopefully you understand the difference uh, obtained using this. Let me just uh, extend this one so that uh, it is clearly visible. So here the input waveform has been, I mean the amplitude has been increased. Previously it was uh, plus 1 only and this time it is plus 5. So the input goes up to plus 5, turns back to 0 and goes to minus 5. So the input fluctuation is something like that. And whenever you go for rounding operation, so now you find if the input signal is in between 0 to 1, so you have two options, either 0 or 1. So if the input signal is less than 0 0.5, then the output is encoded like 0. If the input signal is greater than 0 0.5 but less than 1, then the output is encoded like 1. Once again, if the input is greater than 1 but less than 1.5, then the output is encoded like 1. And if the input signal is greater than 1.5 but less than 2, then the output is encoded like 2. So in this way, uh, this entire operation uh, has been performed over here. So this is all about the rounding operation. So uh, we can have the different types of operations, the sum operation, multiplication operation, product operation, subtraction operation. So these are some fundamental operations mathematically. And apart from that, you can also consider the different types of numerical operations like derivation, integration, and other higher order operations using this simulink model. Here, you must not be bothered about the codes and you should not write any program in order to have the flavor of the integration in order to have the flavor of the differentiation. So everything has been incorporated within those blocks and what you are doing is you are simply invoking those blocks and you are arranging those blocks properly and ultimately you are visualizing the output. So familiarization with simulink model becomes very much useful for the students if they are invoking some complicated circuit for which writing the codes will be difficult for them. Now before I conclude, uh, let me just uh, show you uh, one such uh, applications uh, in the communication background, in the communication field. So for that, uh, uh, we have to go to the communication system toolbox. So there we have lots of toolbox, as I mentioned, the aerospace block set, communication system block set, and then we have computer vision system toolbox, control system, DSP. So let's take the communication system toolbox, for example. And let's take communication source, noise generators. Let me consider, okay. Let's take some sequence generators. Let's consider PN sequence generator, for example. And uh, we'd like to modulate this using some passband modulation. So for that, uh, we have to go to the modulation block. We have two options, analog passband modulation or digital modulation. So let's take the digital modulation, quadrature phase shift key. Let's add this QPSK modulator baseband over here. And let's add some noise. Now in order to add some noise, we have to go to channels. Now you have lots of channels like AWGN channel, binary symmetric channel, relay channel, Russian channel. So here let me consider the AWGN channel for example. So the modulator output is connected to the AWGN channel. And once again uh, I have to consider the demodulator block. And once it is obtained, this is connected accordingly and ultimately as far as the communication things are concerned we can have the constellation diagram, eye diagram or you can also 
calculate the bit error rate. Now here for simplicity let us consider the constellation diagram and just by observing the constellation diagram you can have some sense about the performance of the communication system itself. Now once this is over uh, then what you can do is you can run and then you have a constellation diagram like this. Now here we are performing the experiment with a QPSK or quadrature phase shifting modulation. So you have four phases, one corresponding to plus pi by 4, second one corresponding to minus pi by 4, third one corresponding to plus 3 pi by 4 and the fourth one corresponding to minus 3 pi by 4. So these four dots corresponding to four constellation points. So these are obtained using this particular model. So with this, uh, I would like to conclude this session on Simulink.